and welcome. It really is my pleasure to welcome to New England, uh, Gopal Sen, who is an internationally renowned artist who is currently residing in Houston, Texas. Welcome to Lokwani, Gopal Ji. Namaste. <laughs> pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, just to introduce Gopal to all of you, our audience, I would like to let you know that he is the uh, an international artist who was invited to join a trade mission led by Mayor Sylvester Turner of Houston to India, where he painted for live audiences and his artwork is being showcased in famous art galleries in India. He runs a gallery and the virtual site that he has is called redbluearts.com. This year, he has created a portrait of George H.W. Bush which was accepted by Neil Bush on President's Day. His portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, created in 2019, is a permanent fixture at the Indian Consulate in Houston. Sen has portrayed the spiritual power of women in many of his latest works as the central theme dwelling on contrasting emotions of sadness and self-esteem, illuminating conviction, resilience, and spiritual strength. His heart shows hope and liberation in women, in mind and spirit, even though immersed in tradition. He has done numerous exhibitions all around the country and abroad since January 2012 to showcase his paintings to art enthusiasts from all walks of life. Numerous commissioned works for clients around the country keeps him busy. In addition, he teaches extensively and has taught over 2,000 students over the years. Wow, Gopal, what can I say? <laughs> Such an incredible... You're embarrassing me now. Like, you know, no, it's, it's, it's just, to do that. just amazing. I, and, again, I can say like, I'm, I'm just lucky to do something which I love, which I'm passionate about. Very few people get that opportunity. So I'm grateful to God. I feel first like, you know, it's because of God I could do it. I was a corporate guy and finally I said, you know, I had enough of it. I need to kind of focus on something I'm passionate about. I love kids. I love making a difference in their life. And that's my mission. And, and, and I'm just so grateful to God that he has given me the opportunity to do it. So, so that's... <laughs> it's very, very... I think the greater the artist, the humbler they are. So this certainly is a testament to how great an artist you are. So actually, uh, I wanted to ask you that. Like, I mean, to take on art as a career... Uh, is not trivial and you said you left your corporate uh, job so where did you learn art and how did you be so brave as to you know quit your uh, corporate paying jobs to become an artist and make that a profession for yourself well you know i came to this country as um, in the, to do my masters in hospitality administration from johnson wales i was lucky to get into johnson wales one of the finest um, uh, you know for hospitality schools and then um, I started working for Intercontinental Hotels Group for the longest time. I was with them for 19 years. And, and, um, and I used to pay quite a bit. And during the time, I started teaching kids. And somehow I connected with kids. Somehow I felt like my love to teach kids. And the number grew from 10 to 20 to 50 to 100. And then I felt like, you know, this is my avenue. God is showing me the way to get into this. Um, so I started teaching uh, quite a bit. I used to travel 180 nights a year uh, in my corporate job and uh, plus I would teach and my boss used to say, what are you doing? Like, you know, this is your passion. You need to move on to that. And, and so, so I started painting as well as teaching. And finally, in 2016, I left my corporate job and uh, do it, started doing it full time. And I was blessed again that I got, um, a, 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 you know, I started off pretty late, let's be honest. But but I got the breaks. Every artist needs a break. And um, I got the break to meet some of the, uh, you know, like Mayor Turner who gave me to become a brand ambassador of Houston and do other things which I really enjoy. And that allowed me that liberty, like what you're talking about, like the, the, the challenge to take over. I still have a long way to go. I, I truly feel this is just the beginning and I have a long journey. I'm just, I'm just humbled and grateful to God that he has given me this opportunity. So that's all, you know, it, it's, I'm not worried about the destination. I'm enjoying the journey and that's what I'm focusing on. 
That's just fantastic. So, I mean, here you are, you are a very busy artist. You have a lot of commissioned works. And at the same time you teach, how do you balance that? I mean, I know I'm a dance teacher to keep up your own artistic work along with a very, very extensive teaching schedule. is not trivial. How do you make that balance happen? Well, uh, Ranjiriji, the biggest thing is discipline. Uh, one of the things which I focus on, I had a very, uh, you know, in corporate world taught me discipline also. And I wake up pretty early in the morning, like 5, 30, 6 o'clock. I do meditation in the morning for 45 minutes. Then I would walk for an hour. So morning, I'm very busy. Just like, you know, the silence, the quietness, which allows me to do the creation. And then I would make a call to my mom at 8.30 sharp. Today, I couldn't. So I'm sorry to mom for not doing that. But then I would talk to her for 45 minutes and then I would start painting. Um, I would do at least one to two like sketches and paintings of that nature. And, and that how I start my day. And most of the days, like my classes are in the evening. Uh, when it's a Thursday, Fridays, I do two classes in the evening. And the Saturday and Sunday, I do like four and four, eight classes. A total of 14 classes I do a week. But it's all about being disciplined and not giving an excuse. I believe like in the last 20 years, as I was telling you, I've never missed a single class mm -hmm. because I feel like this is my responsibility to the kids, um, the new generation. They are, you know, technology has taken over today and art is just kind of a bystander out there and trying to build up on that because kids need to know how to kind of create. Um, and, and I'm trying to help them, especially Indian kids. We have a lot of Indian kids out here who didn't get a chance to uh, get exposed to the Eastern culture. And, and just, just, I want to give them the chance to learn some of the Indian style of painting. And, and also like, you know, them to explore creativity as such. And that's my goal, that's my mission. And I hope I can do it. That's, you know, I need the blessing and prayers of everyone for that. Of course, no, God bless you. So you look like you're not honed into one particular style. You, how would you describe your artistic style? You take from everything, traditional arts, contemporary, where would you? Well, well, um, I'm uh, an amalgamation of European style of art as well as Indian style. I do have a signature style. If you see my art, you will see a signature style in it. But then I get exposed. I have a red profoundly on finest artists all over the world, like, you know, European artists as well as Indian artists. And I kind of observed what they were doing and, and kind of studying them. And then I have created my signature style. But when I teach kids, I believe everybody is innately creative. So I allow them to explore their own creativity. I'm there to only coach and guide them and help them uh, to move forward. Because who knows, they may be a much bigger artist than I am. So who am I to tell them what to do? So my job is like Tiger Wood, could it be a coach? have a coach, but you know, Tiger Wood is Tiger Wood. So I may be, you know, coaching a Tiger Wood out there. So I don't want to stop them by my creativity. And my job is to kind of harness their talent and let them to their, to their journey and just be part of it. Fantastic. Now I saw that, uh, you know, in your uh, bio that you have been working on women based themes. I mean, a man, uh, whenever we take an art, right? I always, <laughs> that you, you talk about your emotions as they come from within. How do you pick your ideas? I mean, do they just come as inspirations? And why this woman theme? How do you draw your inspiration? Yes, yes. I, I think um, I believe in the subconscious mind. I believe in the in finite intelligence. And I let my subconscious mind take over. When I'm painting, half of the time, I don't know what I'm painting. So I let my subconscious mind take over. And I believe the universal intelligence allows us to explore and just kind of bring in the new, uh, you know, I have certain things in mind, but I think the, the universal intelligence allows me to explore the creativity. And, and going back to women, um, I've always been, um, you know, um, amazed by uh, Shakti because uh, I have a mom who's amazing. I'm just blessed to have a mother like that who's been so positive. I grew up being a, a child who was um, and low self-esteem, to be honest with you. And I, and I grew up thinking that I'm not good enough. And my whole family, they were so, so talented. And I felt like, ah, I need to do something. And there was my mom always giving me that positivity, believing in me. And, and that's why I grew up like loving and respecting 
the the the, the women figure and and the women um, intellect intellectuality and so I kind of looked at my mom like when she was happy I, when she was sad she would be showing like um, happiness and and that's what we see and and so the duality of emotions that intrigued me when I was a child and I tried to create that in my art so it's I'm not doing cubistic style. If you look at it, I have two double faces. So I'm showing we have different kinds of emotion going through. We are showing it to the public, a very um, happy face, but inside we may be sad. So what is going on? And I think women does better than men. We are, we are very, very poor at that. <laughs> I think you guys are just amazing. And, and just, I, I am blessed to have a wonderful mother. I'm blessed to have a wonderful wife and a daughter. So there are three women who makes my life. So <laughs> what can I draw other than that? Well, it looks like they all have a very, very, they're very lucky to have such a special place in your heart. And you obviously have a very special place in their heart. So you're blessed. And I really look forward to seeing all those pictures. And uh, maybe we can, uh, I'll share some of that in this video as well so that people can Good. see where that comes from. So now I'm going to, you know, ask you this question for, you said children what would you what guidance would you give to an aspiring artist on how they should learn and how they can become successful as artists when they move forward in life well the key is like believing in yourself you know i i tell you in art you need to be original your objective is like even when i'm teaching kids they may be copying from something but then create your own thing even if i am doing a scenery or you're doing a portrait you're looking at that but bring, bring your own individuality. Because in art, originality is everything. It doesn't matter what is the final product, but it should become like Ranjini Ji's painting. So it should be different from Gopal's painting. So it should be have your individuality. So if you have your same signature style in everything you do, after a while, as soon as I see that art, I can say, oh, this is Ranjini Ji's painting. Fantastic. And then you created your own personality, your own character, and that makes you a great artist. So you start by learning the technique, but then you forget the technique and become yourself. Is that what exactly. you Exactly. Exactly. Whether you are a singer, whether you are a dancer, though in singing you have, you know, rags and, you know, in, in dancing you have mudras, but still you have your individuality. You can see in art, the beauty is that you cannot see the artist in motion. You're seeing the final product. So you have to have something there. If you look at finest artists all over the world, they have something there. As soon as you see, you can say, oh, this is Picasso. This is Matisse. This is Dali. What is, that is the beauty. If Dali looked like Matisse, then, then, there is, then there is no way of knowing who that artist is. So you have to have your own particular signature. And, and over the years, it may change. But still, you will have certain characteristics in your art which will prevail through the whole true journey. Beautiful. Speaking of not being able to see the artist, you have done some live paintings. So yep. tell me about that. That is to the accompaniment of dancers and musicians. Um, I'm really curious to know why, why you do that. And uh, you know how, what kind of inspiration happens on the go when you have to make such a painting happen? Well, one of the one of the biggest thing is is I do all of those for a greater cause. So I've done a lot of life painting. I had the pleasure of doing it with Pandit Jasraj and and few other fine um, uh, dancers. Uh, the reason I did it, I even did it with a fashion show, a painting. But I was doing it for a greater cause so that they could um, uh, put that art for auction and would sell for you know few thousands of dollars, and it would go for poor kids of the world or for any other causes. So that was one of that um, reason I did it. Second is that I love that energy, which is all around. And again, God has blessed me to paint pretty fast. So I can harness those emotions and put it on my, on my canvas. So when that allows a, me to do it. When you do a live event, you kind of are inspired by the environment. And that's absolutely, what makes Absolutely. The more the people, the more I get charged up. And I'm like, you know, making my emotions go through. So I'm like dancing when I'm doing the painting. So it's just like, you know, my whole, whole body is creating. So, so that, is, that is the beauty of doing it live. Because, you know, you're getting the energy from people all around you. So they are helping you to create that, wow. that beautiful art. And that makes it all the more beautiful. 
Wonderful. I can see your energy just watching you. So I'm sure it will be a joy watching you paint. Um, I see Ganesha at the back right there. Um, so now when you paint, I'm always curious, you know, when an oftentimes it is the artist who brings the divine to us. You know, it is the icon of that Ravi Verma brought that we see Rama and Krishna in that way. So when you as an artist are painting a divine image, you know, what goes through your mind and do you feel a sense of responsibility that you are bringing this divinity to the world at large? Well, um, again, as I said, like I use my subconscious and sometimes one of the things Ranjaniji I do is that I never question my creativity. One thing like, you know, going back to your previous question of aspiring artists, I will tell them don't question your, you know, your creativity as you grow, because you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in your creativity. So when I'm doing something, I let my, my creativity go. I let my hands take over me. I let my subconscious take over me. And then it's created. And then after uh, 45 minutes, an hour, I look back and try to visualize what I was doing. Because I don't question like why I did that. Because when you question it, your creativity stops there. So when you allow the subconscious take over, allow the universal energy take over, allow the universal intelligence take over, then you create something amazing which is way, way higher and spiritual than you could have ever created. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so now, I mean, I'm just excited for all those people who are going to attend your workshop. Everything you say, I think they should just very attentively listen to it. So I'd like to bring up the fact that you actually have been so kind to be part of the indie art efforts that we are doing at Ekal Vidyalaya for our viewers. Ekal Vidyalaya is an organization that brings education to 100,000 remote rural villages uh, where we are teaching 2.8 million children uh, who would not have access to education. And we do all this at a very low cost of a dollar a day. Um, so it's pretty incredible effort. And uh, we are running this indie art competition to bring awareness and also to provide children here and in the US, an opportunity to think about those rural children who live in the villages, where also we are trying to bring digital technologies uh, through this uh, particular competition. Um, and I really thank you for being an indie art ambassador where you have been kind. And no, no, I'm humbled by the chance. I'm humbled. Where you are going so, to so, so, this cause is way greater that, you know, I'm just so humbled that I could be like, you know, Janaji, thanks to Janaji for giving me the opportunity to reaching out to me. Um, to be part of it. I didn't even know and, and I'm so, so lucky again that I could be and I, I wish I can do a lot more of these um, workshops. I'm starting off with a very simple one. Actually, the painting behind you, that's what we will be doing. The simple painting, but that will allow me to kind of um, just kind of give that the first experience of teaching them and then I will keep on doing more of those like if I can. Fantastic. I'm giving the opportunity. Absolutely. We're going to keep you totally engaged because we see that uh, not only are you a talented artist, but you have the compassion and you want to give back. So Ekal is not going to let you go, Gopalji. We're going to keep <laughs> up with you, you know. So, um, so any um, words of advice for our uh, you know, participants who are of all ages, who are going to actually submit their artwork, uh, finished product for the competition. So any special words of advice as they are proceeding along this, uh, you know, just simple, like, you know, come there with a lot of positivity, have fun and enjoy it. I, I always believe in enjoying the journey, enjoy the process. Don't worry about what will happen. It will, everything will fall in place. If you, if you go for like, you know, uh, the, the, the fun part of it, the creativity part of it, the final product is always great. You know, so that's all I can say. Like, that's awesome. So uh, you, could you describe maybe a special art, your most favorite art piece, how it came to be and what it means to you? Uh, uh, I, again, I've done a lot of work. Um, I just recently did one for after uh, George Floyd's, um, you know, the killing of George Floyd, I create one for um, um, a, a piece like which shows um, positivity and a lot of what is going on in the world about racial bias and working on that. I finished it. I actually sent it to Mayor Turner who loved it. And they're looking at what they can do again. As you know, Houston is going through a lot of COVID cases currently. So he's very, very busy, but he wants to do something uh, with that piece. And I want, like hopefully, see once I became, I'm an artist and I do a painting. And then once I finish it, 
I have no connection. Like a mother and a child, the child is individual by itself. Right now, this art piece is, has its own individual life. And I can just bless and pray that he gets his right place, as a parent does. So I kind of, kind of separate myself from my art piece once it's done. Because then it has its own place. It will have, it will go somewhere and gets, you know, bring happiness to someone. So I just hope it gets a permanent place in a, in a, uh, in a recognized area where people can see it and appreciate like what it tries to say and we can fight for racial bias, which is around the world. And it has uh, every art, I try to bring in some kind of positivity and, and some more color. So I just think, I don't like dark pictures. I like pictures which is like bright and, you know, it's it just like, you know, happiness and, and exuberance. And that's what makes me happy, energy. You know, I think energy is so important today. So you need to give that energy, pass it on to the, all the audience who's looking at any piece of art. I can see that, I mean, the energy in you is just bursting out so early in the morning. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I wish if we were together, I'm sure I would have felt it, but I'm feeling it even via Zoom. So really what an honor it has been to speak with you, Gopalji. And I know that today there's an inauguration of your studio, new studio. So um, my our sincere best wishes. Please bless me, please bless me for that. Yes. <laughs> the Lord Ganesha, Ganesh Puja and Ganesha is behind you. So I'm sure it's going to be a spectacular thing and we really will eagerly watch on redbluearts.com to see all the wonderful work that you're doing and as Akal, you know, we'll go ahead. I think you were thinking of saying And, and I was going to say like I'm also I'm going to do Akal and also I'm doing a lot of online classes. I'm teaching around 250 kids every week mm -hmm. so if anybody is interested to do any of my online classes, they're welcome to. They can go to redbluearts.com and just just you know, do a class, do a couple of classes just to see, I can assure you they will enjoy it, you know, because yeah. I teach on one-on-one -on -one, um, because I kind of, um, though there are a lot of people, it's a group, but I kind of pick on, I put them in different uh, breakout rooms and I come to each of them and try to see what is their talent and how I can explore their creativity and help them move on in their journey. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to attending your workshop and maybe you can even make an artist out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, yes. Thank wonderful. you so much. Wonderful. Ekal is grateful to your support and God bless you. And thank you for taking the time today to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Ranjit. Uh, so much.